Hi everybody, this is Luke. The last 12 months for me have really been the year of e-bike kits. I wanted to try an electric vehicle for my daily commute to work. And soon I realized it has to be an e-bike. Since I wasn't really into up motors, I decided to go for a mid-drive one. Back then, the question for me was, which e-bike kit fits the most into my needs? I started experimenting with the Tongsheng one and I really liked it. But soon I wanted to have a second e-bike back in my hometown. So I tried a Bafang kit and I loved it. Now many of you asked for a comparison video of the two motors. I did my best to collect all the differences between them. So without further ado, let's dive into it. This is the first e-bike that I've built. Since it was my first ever build, I looked for a second-hand bike as base. I chose the Tongsheng motor because it was cheaper than the Bafang and I was attracted by the idea of the torque sensor. In this video I'm going to talk about the VLCD5 interface that comes with this kit. Just consider that you can have a different interface with more or less features. Someone also shows how to install a custom firmware on these interfaces, but since that's not the topic of this video, we'll leave those possibilities aside. I like the presence of the two sets of buttons. The monochrome LCD is actually more than enough for me, and the only regret is the lack of some useful information on screen, as well as inside the settings menu. For instance, you cannot choose the number of assistance level. Anyway, having four fixed levels seems to be good for me. To enter the settings menu, you need to long press the power button and the button E for 3 seconds. Then you have to press 4 times the button E. From this moment E is your setting selector and plus and minus let you choose values. You have a number of settings that is enough to customize your build. Wheel diameter is an essential one. What I don't get is the reason why there is a speed limit that you can set in a range between 15 and 45 km per hour and also another setting where you can choose whether or not to activate the 25 km specific limit. I love the possibility to limit the consumption in Ampere, but on the other hand, it would be useful to show on screen the value in volt of the battery charge. Onto the kit itself, the locking ring mechanism is not perfect. I actually had to use some hard glue to let it stay at its place, something that was unnecessary with the double ring mechanism on the Bafang kit. I was impressed on the other hand by the simplicity of the Tongsheng's cabling. It lacks of 6 volt light support even if someone managed to modify the internal relay to get it. But overall, as my first ever build experience, it was simple to understand and realize it. Another thing that is missing is a dedicated shift sensor support. Anyway, you can find some shift sensor that you can connect directly to the interface, if you agree about giving away one of the two brake sensors. Of course you can ride it like a normal bike if you want. You can do it by selecting zero assistance or even leaving the battery at home. You will not perceive any kind of resistance doing it, just like a normal bike. The way this torque sensing system works really surprised me. It is flawless and progressively multiply your legs force with no delay at all. It doesn't feel like being assisted, it's more like having bionic legs. The thing is that moving to an higher assistance level does change your speed, but it does not seem to be easier, your effort will stay almost the same. What I'm really missing here is the indication about the motor's consumption or its rounds per minute. The second one is even more important since the assistance will stop at a certain level of pedaling rounds per minute. 
Now we gotta talk about the acceleration throttle. Personally, I don't like it. Yeah, I see the point of a gentle start in order to protect the motor and the chain, but what about this delay? Do you see it? The throttle will behave independently from the selected assistance level, and someone might like it. I would have preferred this to be a choice inside the settings menu. Let's talk about this weird thing. Let's say you're pedaling and you need a little more push from the motor. If you twist it, you will instantly feel a complete loss of power. The thing is, for the motor there's no difference between you standing still or moving. It drops all the assistance to gently provide it back. For me this makes no sense, and it seems more like a lazy implementation of the throttle feature. Here you see my second e-bike build. I already had a bike base with front suspensions. So this time I decided to mount a buffet kit and build something that can also handle some off-road. What you're seeing here is a colorful P850C LCD display, a fully featured interface that also shows the motor consumption in watt and which has the only downside to be less visible under a bright sun. Also, it cannot be removed, contrary to the VLCD5. Double press the power button to get into a self-explanatory settings menu with tons of options, all super useful. In this case you can choose to show not only the voltage, but even the percentage as the battery indicator. Unfortunately, the clock will not survive the removal of the battery, and it will be freezed at that moment. A very nice touch of this interface is the presence of a light sensor that, if you want, may turn your 6 volt light on or off. You can also decide the sensitivity of that sensor to better reflect your needs. The speed limit here is more consistent. And the only weird thing is that you can select whatever number up to 60 or 99 that stands for unlimited speed. The other missing feature on this interface is the lack of a consumption limiter in Ampere, which is present on the VLCD5. By contrast, you will be able to select the number of assistance levels. Your choice is between 3, 5 and 9 levels. I appreciated the attention to the locking ring mechanism. This double ring is well made and you don't need to add anything else to keep the motor at its place. About the cabling anyway, that is a little bit more complicated. You will gain a gear shifting support cable, the sensor is not included, and a 6 volt headlight cable. The interface cable departs as a single cable from the motor, but then it splits into four cables before arriving to the interface. It might look a little more messy than the Tongsheng kit. Any connection is optional, and the only one who is directly connected to the interface is the single button set. It's worth saying that it's easy to misclick a button, so sometimes you'll need to click twice to actually press it. Even with this kit you can ride like a normal bike, by setting zero assistance or with the motor switched off. The difference about the pedal assistance is evident. After half a turn you feel that the bike pushes you, like if there is someone behind you, until you reach the speed limit specific for that level. As you increase the assistance level, that force helping you becomes stronger and your effort gets reduced until it happens that you are just ghost pedaling. With the expression ghost pedaling I'm referring to the sensation of pedaling not to provide some force, but only as an input to order the motor to push at your place. Unless, of course, you face a steep climb. In that case, you and the motor will work together. Now, 
This throttle is instantaneously reactive. I really love it. For Buffan Kit, the throttle would behave differently depending on the selected assistance level. And someone might like it. I would have preferred this to be a choice inside the settings menu. No surprise here. When you twist the throttle, you will get the full potential of your motor. At the cost, of course, of a premature discharge of your battery. 28. This kind of throttle implementation can be very helpful in case you have to face a steep climb. You just press it and you won't lose any power while you keep pedaling. To summarize a bit, you can clearly see how two motors apparently very similar to each other can differ in many various aspects. Neither of the two come with a shift sensor, so the rule stays the same for both. When you have to change the gear, first, freeze your legs. I prefer not to compare their maximum speeds. It depends on so many factors, like battery charge level, pad slope, tire condition, gear ratio, even the wind presence. So it doesn't make so much sense to talk about that. However, I can say that the Buffan kit, generally, is faster than the Tongsheng one. More speed, however, also means more battery consumption. I can already imagine you thinking, wait, this is not a comparison, there are too many personal opinions here. But in reality, that's what this video is meant to be. A journey into all the small details of these two mid-drive motors, with some personal thought on which you can agree or not. Anyway, this will help you to form your personal, probably different, opinion about the two, and, maybe, help you decide which one to pick. Which one is the best, you may ask? Well, the answer is, of course, it depends. My favorite one will be something in between, combining the best aspects of the two motors. Each one is better than the other for some reasons. I've tried to resume that in this table for your convenience. Now it's your turn. Which one did you pick? Does your experience reflect what you've seen here? In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. Consider that making it was not an easy thing without the gift of ubiquity. Liking it will mean that you appreciate the effort, and it will also mean a lot to me. Also, feel free to subscribe, so you won't miss any future video. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.